Hello and welcome Hello. to Bolshevik Bistro. My name is Eugene, and tonight I'm here with my buddy Vajnik to talk about Russian Civil War. Hello, Vajnik. How's it going? Hey, I'm doing all right, eh? Uh, today, we like decided to take this topic because we already talked about Russian Revolution. And uh, if we go back 100 years ago, in the past, um, the shit was starting to go bad <laughs> 100 years, uh, this time 100 years ago. And uh, I believe that we haven't really talked a lot about Civil War on this channel. And I don't think anywhere on, like, on YouTube. There, there, there is like not enough information, in my opinion, not enough uh, discussions about Russian Civil War uh, that we should have because it's, you know, in my opinion, Russian Civil War is as important uh, as the October Revolution itself. Because, yes, I'd say it's a yeah. very fascinating fucking conflict that happened during the Russian Civil War and the various factions. And I really fucking am interested, in, like one unveiled during the Russian Civil War. Exactly, because, like, when you learn about, like, fucking, you know, fin when you tell people that, did you know that actually there were some, like, French people basically invaded Ukraine? Exactly. <laughs> it's like, what? Like, are you serious about that? Like, yeah, like, French people invaded Ukraine. Brits landed uh, in the north. And, like, all those people wanted to destroy Soviet Union, Soviet Russia at the time. And they just wanted to destroy everything and kill everyone. And because people were that afraid of communism. And uh, we see every time when there is a revolution, there is a civil war. It's like, it's inevitable, almost inevitable. Yes, indeed. Uh, yeah. And uh, so, therefore, we must talk about it. And I believe that uh, we should start. Yes, um, actually, Don, sub actually, Don, uh, in a chance oh, that yeah, 14 countries help the whites. So, like. That's <laughs> Like Czechoslovakia, Czechoslovakia, Finland, uh, Britain, fucking the U.S., France, a lot of fucking countries supported the uh, the big it's boy crazy. game. Yeah, it's really crazy. Uh, so let us start with with the factions in the war. And if Chad wants to help us out uh, in this discussion, because it's such a complex thing, we can't talk about the whole civil war in just you know um, one hour. It's impossible. Like the very, it's a giant. Sorry for interrupting, but there's like a fuck ton of like factions. It's not just the whites and the yeah. reds or the greens, the blacks, the Dushnaks, the fucking various SRs. It, it's fucking, it's a huge conflict that's uh, exactly very underrated. Yeah, history. because that's like, fucking the sad. Many, like, historians base their whole fucking careers on like fucking uh, uh, researching, you know, this topic. The four. Yeah. <laughs> in my opinion, um, like we will try to cover as much as possible, but this uh, this fucking thing is mostly uh, to spark some interest for you to go and um, research the topic, get into it, watch documentary, read books. It's really cool. Like when I was looking into it myself this time, it re you know, uh, reestablish my interest in the conflict. It is really, really, really good. So why don't we start with the big boys, the reds and the whites, because it's the biggest, biggest boys and the, the most influential boys. So, and by the way, yeah, a couple of things I'd like to shout out uh, our Discord server. Thank you for endorsement, actually, Don, of our Discord. Feel free to uh, join us uh, on email. Uh, Please, Discord so. server, the link is in the description and in we're, the chat. We're doing some good shit. All we, the entire fucking Discord has devolved into us playing like Age of Empires and Stronghold Crusaders. So <laughs> just join us. It's really fucking fun. I go on there every yeah. day now. We were not playing when we will not play in the games. We are shit posting in voice chat and recording. Like you can check uh, out live recording sessions of the podcast every week. It's fun, fun times. Yeah. Um, and if you can join, you can join, like, fucking evening with comrades, and that's fucking cool. Yeah, like, it's really cool. So hang out with us. So, yeah, uh, let's start with the Red Army. The so, big boys. The Red Army, the big boys in the uh, Reds. So what can you tell me about the Soviet Russia and other Soviet republics? Well, I mean... Like, is it, yeah. 
the thing is with the Reds was that uh, there weren't like one unified political faction. It's not just the Bolsheviks or the Mensheviks and the various SRs. Now, I'm not really much, I don't know much about the other SRs apart from like the Bolsheviks and the shit that happened there. But uh, I'm just going to say just like the main thing is that there weren't a unified faction. That's a fucking misbelief. That's a, that's a misconception. Yeah. Fucking stupid. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, what's your take on the Bolsheviks and like, I mean, the Reds in general? Uh, 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 like, anything. it was really crazy because, uh, in my opinion, when you look at it, like, because there wasn't like the system, like when we think of Soviet Union, we think of this one party system, you know, and this is like this party rules over everyone and everything. It wasn't really, you know, like that in the beginning. Like, it, it was literally worker Soviets in many cases that were actually doing a lot of revolutionary work. Like, uh, it was them, rather, like an established party. Obviously, uh, um, if you can, like, if you pinpoint the importance, Bolsheviks were the biggest faction in the Soviets, and they were the most influential ones, and yes. they compiled yeah. most of the leadership. But, uh, obviously... Uh, just to say, ah, those were the Bolsheviks is really reductory and just, you know, ignores so many people who were actively participating in it. Like, um, for example, like the left SRs, you know, who yeah. were, um, who were like sort of an agrarian, like part of like a very agrarian socialist dudes who were supporting the Bolsheviks in the revolution. And, uh, they played a big part in the civil war as well. And as, uh, Paul asks in the chat at the moment, Eugene, why you no sleep? I'd like to ask you why you no sleep. You all, you're also in Belarus. It's rather late. Go to bed, Paul. Go to bed, Paul. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, it, it's really interesting that basically what Russia, right after the revolution, they had such a big task. They had to create an army from bottom up. Yeah. Like, they needed to create everything. Once, like from, scratch. from zero, completely from scratch, and when you look at the numbers, it's insane. Like I'm at the moment, like I opened up a Wikipedia page to look at the numbers of strength of them, and I'm like, fucking hell! Like if you look at the Reds, you know, it's like at the peak, the amount of people who were fighting on the side of the Reds was five, almost five and a half million. The thing is with that number is that um. A lot of it, a fucking huge majority of the people from the White Army want to join the Reds because I believe the Bolsheviks were promising them, like, I believe, free land or something mm -hmm. like that. Well, they, and, basically, uh, because there was peasants who were fighting in yeah. the... The uh, White Army... Who were fighting the armies in the White Army, and they said, you know what? The majority of the White Army was mainly just bourgeois sort of types. They weren't, they weren't like, peasants at all. Like, the Cossacks, for instance. They were very wealthy fucking individuals. However, there were Red Cossack divisions, too. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. But, like, it's really... Uh, it's really... Uh, oh... And Paul just said, I just had a chat with a guy who said that the whole revolution thing was a coup. Oh, fucking hell. That's like, stupid. That's fucking stupid. It's really stupid. Like, I love those fucking anti-Soviet guys who go out of their way to start lying about everything and, like, completely misreading the story. Uh, <laughs> it's so insane. Fucking hell. Like, uh, and when you, like, again... The the like I believe that we have talked about this by the way uh, multiple times. Then uh, we have to separate between uh, a historical debate and a ideological debate. Like for example, what we are having now is a historical debate where we yeah. talk about the different opinions of historians and different facts and stuff like this. You know, um, while ideological debate is when we ultimately talk about the ways of organizing society uh, and different ideologies. So, in my opinion, both um, things are important. Right. But uh, the, both things are important, but ultimately, like, if you're debating someone, don't and to debate about, like, communism, don't fall into the trap of, ha-ha, Stalin. Holodomor. Holodomor. That's it. What's you know, the point of debating people if you know you're right, though? That's the exactly. fucking thing. 
Exactly. Like, don't debate those people. Just call them fucking stupid and just fucking leave them in the dust. There's yeah, no point in debating. Discuss, if you really want to discuss, you know, if you, if you, because I, don't, I believe that it's really into like, it's dishonest to claim that uh, we already know what's going on and blah, blah, blah. Uh, like, this debates are like, important. The whole but history, there is, if you're debating there is about, I'm that. sorry for interrupting, but if, if fucking, there's, yeah. it's a giant fucking pet peeve. If you're talking about socialism, the system of socialism, communism, don't go into the whole fucking historical trap about Stalin. Just fucking ignore him because they're trying to trap you because they don't exactly. know shit about fucking socialism. Just ignore him. Tell him to go eat my ass. Yeah, but today we're actually talking about historical stuff. So, <laughs> yes, the good. Oh, shits. man. Oh, man. It reminds me like to go back on the topic. Red Army. Red Army is such a fucking insane machine. Like. One thing that you can like, um, you can say whatever you want about Trotsky, but he managed to do what nobody really expected Soviet Russia to do. Like in terms of army, he managed, yeah, like he managed to organize a bunch of people without any military education, without like on on nothing, you know, and uh, they just managed to over. Come of like established generals and established military leaders uh, of white movement, and so in my opinion, like Red Army is such a crazy organization. Like I still don't have no idea how they managed to do it. You know, the only explanation that I find why Reds ultimately won was because. People literally like trusted them more than the red, than the whites or anyone else. Like they had popular support. Like uh, Bolsheviks had popular support of the masses. This is why it's not a coup, you know. Because if it was a coup, I'm pretty sure that Bolsheviks would have lost like in a month after taking power. But they managed to even go through the hardest time in the civil war that possible, which. Um, which was the winter of 1920, which was the hardest time. And if you want to learn more about what they did in 1920, I recommend checking out, like, obviously, historical uh, sources, but also a very interesting piece about, um, like, that mentions a lot so-called war communism, uh, which is called, um, what was it? Yeah, it was Terrorism and Revolution, was, which was a book that was written by Trotsky as a counter, like, as a hit piece against, basically a hit piece against Kolsky, uh, a response to Kolsky. And there he goes in deep explaining what's, like, how they were mobilizing the masses in, like, in conditions that are comparable to basically, you know, slavery. Like, they literally demanded people to work more because the front needed more stuff. They needed more things. They asked them to work unpaid hours on weekends because that was the only way to do it. But because of the way they did it, people and because people actually believed in a cause, they were informed about it and they understood what's, what they were doing. They went ahead in the factories and said, you know what, fuck it, I'm going on Saturday. And after the they got their pay on Friday, they went and they worked occasionally two days in a row for free. Like, just imagine, they put out additional 16 uh, unpaid hours of work a week, which is insane. Like, how can you make people do that? You know? Yeah. Like, they did it. Like, and they went through the hottest time. It was the coldest fucking winter. They had to, like, the land came, like, at one point it was, like, for example, a particular city could be one day in the hands of the whites, in another day in the hands of the reds, and if the whites knew that the reds were coming, they literally dismantled all of the factory. They took the most important things that they could bring with them, and the things that were too big to carry with them, they smashed so that the enemy wouldn't have it, and then they move out, you know, retreat, and then the Reds come in, and all the factories are basically a bunch of scrap metal. And then they had to work with that somehow. They need to rebuild. They need. They needed to do something with this. 
yeah. while it was while you they were on the, on the verge of starvation and dying of cold. So <laughs> I wouldn't recommend anyone, you know, being in this sort of state. But this is this is what civil war ultimately is. Every single like every single death in a civil war is one of your comrades dying, even if it is the enemy, because those people are the same people who were like a year ago the working people of this country that you like depended on in terms of production, in terms of political power, in terms of like all stuff like this. So it's really, really, really fucking hard. And they managed to do it. Like, what do you think, Vashnik? Why did Reds, like, what was the most important thing uh, that guaranteed Reds winning? I know this will sound fucking like this will sound fucking cheesy shit, but I think it was mainly how much people simply supported the Reds, and how yeah. much like simple, simply due to support, and how they managed to convince a lot of people from the White Army to simply become part of the Reds. I think that was the main thing that sort of you know, uh, you know, um, basically gave the edge to the Reds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. But yes. let's let's talk about the Whites. Oh, so the best one. As the Russian the ultranationalist, <laughs> yeah. As a what, as a Russian ultranationalist, Russian, could you please uh, give us a rundown of the generals that were in charge of particular there areas of Russia? Of them. Um, yeah, but like out of the top of my again, head, there was no leader of white movement. Yes. Again, very important. After the czar, after the <laughs> czar, there was like a lot of these um, generals and basically political officials that were trying to essentially gain power. Uh, and oh, Vajni had to mute himself because uh, fucking family. But yeah, like there, there was no leadership in White Army. There was no one guy, you know. And it's really important to understand that uh, one of the reasons why a lot of people supported, uh, like supported Reds in this case, was that they were afraid that one of those generals may as well have you know defeated i'm back uh yeah right one of those generals may as well have defeated like the red army take to control over the rest of the uh land and became a military dictator you know either by suppressing the other gen re rebellious generals why wouldn't he and either so, uh, use the tsar or not use the tsar as their so, like puppet because so, uh, yeah, let me. I'm sorry for let me give you a rundown of the generals because they're quite an interesting pair of fucking people. Yeah, first there was big boy Admiral Kolchak, the, the famous oh. boy, the famous boy, the big the boy. famous boy, the big boy Kolchak, Siberian was, boy. The, nah, he wasn't like I'd say he was more East Asian boy. Well, yeah, he was he served in like Vladivostok and like the east, basically the far east, mm -hmm. basically the coast of Amor. And uh, he, I think he wanted to do some similar to Kerensky, where he wanted to institute like a sort of uh, like a democratic republic or some bullshit like that. But um, yeah, he was a big boy. He controlled the, he was basically the admiral of the White Army. Then there's uh, uh, Vrangel, also another big boy. He was, I, I believe. He was the Crimean boy. He, uh, yes, he was in Eastern Ukraine. Yeah. Um, I, there's also Denikin, which is, I think he was like the overall general of like the white army, like in the civil war, but I'm not sure. Well, yeah, it's really hard to say because they try yeah. to organize between each other, but like Kolchak did whatever he fucking wanted, just as Wrangle. Exactly. He wanted a fucking, he was like Sternberg. He wanted to just fucking, uh, do the shit on oh, the random leftist. Uh, Yeah. I, I'm not really. At, I'm sorry for interrupting, but he's trying to contact me for a while. I'm very fucking sorry. I'm not active in Hangouts. Like, if you can get on Discord, that'd be fucking swell. I'll send yeah, you the jump link on again. These last, last Discord, so yeah, we play video game. games. Play, yeah, and you can talk to Vaznik there and me. Yeah, and if you have, so yeah, please get it right back. In. Yeah, there it is again. Um, now back to the shits. So mm -hmm. this is a meme one. This is a big. Everyone knows Sternberg, of course. I just want to talk because so, okay. it's a very fascinating. I think all of you already know, so I'm just make it short. He was the uh, he was mm -hmm. the Mongolian weeble, and uh, I, love him. I love him. He's my hero. I have a portrait near my masturbate to him every fucking day when I see him at night. I just love that man. 
Oh, uh, he was basically Genghis Khan. He was amazing. He was a beautiful man. Yeah. Like, this is, like, he's so great. Like, for people who don't know, uh, there was a guy. He was just, you know, chilling out. And he was yes. like, you know what? Fuck the Reds. Imperialism is so great. Let's do more of that. I love eagles and shit. And then he was like, you know what? <coughs> We're losing. I better take the rest of my army and go into Mongolia. Yeah, one, no, 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 yeah, and then here's the fucking thing he could do. He just fucking went in and just marched throughout the fucking Gobi Desert with, like, a fucking dumbass. And uh, half his troops abandoned him, and then he died in Siberia by the Red Army, unfortunately. Yeah. He's a, I, I really recommend you read up on him, for those who don't know. He's a very fascinating fucker. Yeah, he thought he was a reincarnation of Genghis Khan. He, uh, I don't like... think it was him he thought uh, on him, but... Uh, what was I gonna fucking say? Uh, I think it's only the men who served under him who thought it was uh, Chinggis Khan. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to think of him as a drugged up, crazy, who's you know, just, uh, lord. An alcoholic. Yeah, he was. He's just an amazing man. Um, if he he's were taking hero. charge of Russia, I think it would be a far better system than Soviet Union. I agree. Fuck because Stalin. Stalin was a fuck, fucking silly. Yeah, you know what? Fuck Lenin. Fucking yeah. Stalin would be a better leader. Just better leader. He the Russia would be eternal. Same with Kolchak. Kolchak looked beautiful. We need the coast of Vladivostok to be under Kolchak. No, no, fuck him. If 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 I had to choose between Sternberg, the fucking Genghis Khan the second, and some I fucking admiral, admiral. But boy, if we no. had two, we'd have the admiral and the 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 Genghis Khan. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Look at how easily we are sw like we're sworn into revisionism and uh, <laughs> like betraying the revolution like that. Exactly. It's because listen. Have you listened to the the White Army music? Eugene fucking oh, hates me for this, I but I hate keep spamming it. Yes, I love it. I it's fucking. So bad. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, so like, who were the whites mostly? Who are who are those people? The who were there? Who were in the ranks of the White Army? Are you talking about the army itself or like the staff, the generals and shit like that? Because we already discussed that. Well, yeah, the generals we already discussed them. What about like the the people who were fighting for the uh, White They were fucking weird. They were like, a lot of them were just like rich faggots and ultra nationalists, I think, but I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But um, there are the Cossacks, I know. They they were yeah the Cossacks most of the Cossacks fan. were fucking pro white army because a lot of them were they were basically very autonomous and they were giving a lot of uh fucking shit from the white army and from uh Tsar in particular like yeah. they were always the rich basically, boys they supported them because of the all the privileges that were granted yeah, to they were ex during the yeah, Tsar period they were extremely like they were the big boys um there were red Cossack divisions too and I believe there was remaining like poor. Cossacks were mainly in poverty, if I'm not mistaken, who were part of the Red Cossacks. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, the, the White Army, unfortunately, got bamboo. So I would love uh, a White Army. I would love the White Army. I would love White Russia. I wish the monarchy would no. survive. Slava Tsar. No. Slava Tietchistin. No, please stop. <laughs> You're a, you know, you a bad Vajnik. Stop it. I'm gonna make them. This is, this I'm gonna make horrible. them think I'm an ultra nationalist. One day, one day, someone will think I'm a fascist. Uh, so the chat is asking: Discuss how Black Hundred somehow survived and how the much hell about the Black Hundred got so popular today. Um, in my opinion, like I don't really know whether they like have their ideology survived today because, in like in today's, if we look at today's Russia, what they do, um. If you mean like the red, like it's not the Maknavites. Maknavites were a bit different. We'll no, no, the Black Hundreds. I think were like ultra nationalists. They were basically proto-fascists, and they were yeah. the reason. Like they were part of the reason why the, this, there was this amazing quote by, um, what was this man? Who was this British fuck who was like an atheist, and then he, he was like a trot, and then he became a pro, uh, like, um. Like a guy who started supporting Bush and whatnot. Uh, Remember this British Richard atheist guy? Dawkins. It wasn't Dawkins, a different guy. <laughs> like a fat smoking Fucking guy. Richard Dawkins. Churchill? No. <laughs> okay. I'd love to live in a timeline where um, 
<laughs> like, uh, <laughs> Churchill is the leader of the new atheist movement. <laughs> Christopher Hitchens, thank was you. Was it Christopher Hitchens? Hitchens? Yes. I didn't know he was a trot. He was a trot at first, and then he said, fuck it. But his last words were something like capitalism did, uh, inevitable. He basically said that at the end, capitalism will lose. Um, he, he be, so he accepted uh, Lenin and Trotsky as his true lords and saviors at the last minute of his life, though. So basically, yeah. he famously said, if it wasn't for the October Revolution, um, we would use a Slavic word for fascism and not a Latin one. And, like, in my opinion, those generals of white army and... Um, uh, those, you know, hundred, uh, black hundreds are the main reason why he said that. Yeah. Like, those guys, like, they were rather, rather crazy. And people, like, most of them joined the white movement, obviously. And um, they, the reason why they are, they're sort of brought back today, just as, like, imperialism and, like, um, all those you know, uh, what's it, white, uh, yellow and black flags and whatnot, this stuff. Um, it's mostly because people want to use historical revisionism as a way to, um, like, emphasize the spooks and use this because they use spooks as their, their way of looking at life. And it's so easy to just look at a particular like, fringe group in uh, in time of change during the revolution and just claim your uh like eh, i'm that because i really like the ideas of this failed movement you know <laughs> uh and they sort of do that and um basically reactionaries like to brand themselves after those this you know this stuff and so i can't say if they're brought back but like fascism never went away. This is the, this is the main problem, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, in terms yeah. of like, in terms of we would be using a Russian word for fascism. Uh, a lot of fucking fascist ideologies developed mainly in Italy, even before, even during the Russian Civil War. It was always it always stayed in Western Europe. I don't think we would have like this sort of. There were just simply ultra nationalist black countries. I don't think they were developed sort of these. I didn't think they. I don't think they had a like a devout fucking philosophy well, or something. They could have easily adopted fascism from Italy. They would have. They would have adapted it. it. Of course, they would have adapted it. But I don't and they would they have a ever. funny Russian word for it, like easily. <laughs> like yeah. they because they wouldn't use the word fascism as their name of the ideology. No, they will find something fun. You know, like um, I, I don't know. They would. They would. They would come up with something interesting. Uh, Funny so day one. Let's talk about anarchists. Oh, the, the the big boys, the main boys. Everyone's excited about these ones. Yes, Nesta Makno, the fucking insurrection army of Ukraine. I just want to uh, do mainly one thing about debunk the fucking the tanky shits about them. Okay. Like the fucking anti-Semitism thing, XD, because this this Soviet document from like the fifties said that he was anti-Semitic. That means anti-Semitic. Ha. Bamboozled, evil man, <laughs> horrible man, disgusting man. Checkmate, so, Anna Kitties. So, what's about it? You say that the the sources for this whole thing is are bad. Yeah, basically, it's similar to the Hungarian Revolution. Yeah, understandable. So, tell me about the Black Army. Uh, what, what, where they were situated, what they were doing. They're mainly situated in eastern Ukraine. And uh, they're just anarchists, basically. I don't know their... I don't know much about the... I'm more interested in, like, the white army ship. I don't know much about the fucking anarchists. I believe they were um, platformists, if I'm not mistaken. Like, Mac no, yeah. was a platformist. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and... Uh, what was I going to fucking say? Were they anarchists? I think we're at comms, yeah. Oh. So they were really good. They were really good in terms of fighting. Um, yeah. They they did a bunch of stuff in terms of, like, they did a bunch of guerrilla warfare. They had a crazy fucking idea of, hey. That's, uh, that's a Chanka? 
yeah, like one day there was this, you know, some Ukrainian dude named uh give me a random Ukrainian name. Um, um uh Vladimir Vladimir Dmitry. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's Russian. Uh you know, They're Mikola. All the same. One day Mikola, one day came to Mikola. And he was like, hey, Mikola, I have a great idea. How about we take this Maxim gun and put we'll it on the machine fucking... gun, put it on cart with horse. We get three and men and we shoot. They die. Very good idea. <laughs> and they were like, fuck, dude, I never thought of that. You can like, you, why do, why are we, we don't, or oh, Mikola was really lazy and he didn't want to take the gun from the cart. Because they were transporting it fucking, Yeah, the fucking Maxim like, guns fuck. had the cart attached to them with the fucking wheels and shit. It was hilarious. And he said, like, fuck it. I'm, I'll just I'll just stay here in the cart and I just shoot them from here. Whatever. <laughs> and then he was like, oh, shit. I can literally run away and keep killing them. This well, is insane. This uh, is like Mongols 2.0. Like, oh, horse archers. The, this uh, is crazy. I want to read the Lucas Lee shits. Uh, the Black Army was basically an edgelord version of the White Army. I agree. As a Russian ultra-nationalist, I think they are degenerate <laughs> fucking commies. They should be killed. Oh, my God. Oh, Black... Wait. Black Hundreds, not Black Army. <laughs> oh, God. Someone, uh, yo, you fucked up, Vosnik. You fucked up, Vosnik. What? what? Is, is, are they... Uh, are you mean the... Uh, do you mean it's... Do you, uh, Lucas, you mean fucked up? No, you fucked up because he said black hundreds. He corrected himself. Oh, I thought he said the black army. No, oh. yeah, he said black army, but he corrected himself to black hundreds. Yeah, they were the edgy pre white army stuff. Oh yeah, that's true. Basically. Uh, what about the green army? Good, um, actually, yeah. The, Let's green talk army, about green army. the green army were simple men. They're simple people. They were, um, they were basically peasants that said, fuck you, we don't want Soviet Union, and we don't want fucking Orthodox Cross men, the, the, the white people here. So, uh, <laughs> the white the, people. <laughs> we don't want the black okay. people or the white people. So what they did is that uh, they're basically just peasants who said fuck all of them and just basically had armed insurrections against them. Uh, I like that. That's cool, I guess, but the thing is, they didn't have their own ideology. I don't know. They're basic. They're weird. They're just basically all armed insurrectionary groups, like peasants against the yeah. white and red army. It really comes so, from like one village to another. How, like, what sort of uh, ideology they had? I, they I think primitivist. they were like a, yeah. They were they were just, rather left wing. Like, if you could uh, pinpoint what them they were all about, uh, you could say that they were a combination of uh, right and left. Uh, yeah, yes, there was the people who third, were third the, positionists, basically. Yeah, but anti-authoritarian third positionist. Yeah, uh, so I, Barbie's correct that. here. So soccer bar is correct here. Mm -hmm. Um, they did resist land confiscation. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, because they were like, you know what, fuck it, we it's our land. We'll be we protecting ourselves. We will build our own fucking communities. Uh, we don't need any of that shit uh, in, at all. Go away. And yes. uh, Eat my some ass. of them were agrarian socialists, some of them yeah. were, uh, you know, like most of them were like, you know, get away from my land, re and um, fuck everyone. They're they the were first hand okay. caps, they were the first hand caps, yeah, basically, basically, first hand caps. Uh, Mensheviks, Mensheviks suck. Uh, Mensheviks, uh, are Sons the former Trotsky. I uh, yeah, because Mensheviks suck, and I'd like to quote <laughs> Trotsky uh, about Mensheviks. Uh, you sh you all belong to the dust uh, dust bowl of history. Uh, <laughs> he shouted. I don't, in know, the I don't know much about the ideology of the Mensheviks. Sock dams. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> they were the sock dams. Really, like that's it. <laughs> they were like, you know what? No revolution needed. Fuck it. Let's let's vote on stuff. Hags D, let's just fucking be sock dams. I would support this. If we had a Menshevik <laughs> White Army like joint like like uh like if the Menshevik simply joined the White Army, I think everything would have some turned better. Did. Some of them did because no, they but were like all of them. Like if Trotsky, Trotsky, if Trotsky is part of the White Army, everything would have been better. <laughs> oh my God! By the time Mensheviks became like a real th problem to the to the thing, like you, you by by that by the time of revolution. Trotsky was already uh, like 
Bolsheviks in and out. Bolshevik oh. in and out. Uh, only bro Ukrainian Parham nationalists. brought up something interesting. Uh, Ukrainian nationalists, I was about to say. Oh, let me quickly... St Stepan Bandera did nothing wrong. Uh, I'd like, before we talk about Stepan Bandera, I'd like to mention that Ukrainian nationalist movement actually had, like, if we talk about Ukraine in this whole thing, and, uh, like, Marxists yeah. in Ukraine, because we talked about the anarchists there, yeah, uh, and the stuff like this, like, Ukraine was a place where the Nazbol movement was born. And uh, by Nazbol, I mean a very specific kind of nationalism. It was literally left-wing nationalism so that they, was starting to boil up. I would consider them Nazbol, though. I would just consider them, like, I don't know much about They the were called national communists at the time. National communism was basically, you know what? This whole thing about having um, having a socialist state, it's fun. Let's do this. You know, power to the people. It's all good. But at the same time, fuck Russians. Like, stay away from my Ukraine. Re. This is very bad. We need to execute them. And that's what they did. Like, most of them were killed and they were like, or they left. But um, they wanted to create a Ukrainian socialist republic that wouldn't be a part of our union because they were too afraid that they will basically become a puppet state in hands of Russia. Jamie made a good point. I find it ironic that most of the whole Nova Russia thing is basically exactly where the free territory was. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good yeah. one. It is. It's really ironic. Uh, like, in many ways, those guys who did, like, who did want to do communism and nationalism like all of the third position is shit became a part of it really really late but if you go back like really really back in terms of like tracking the theory and the movements you will hit this part the russian revolution civil war and the old ukrainian soviet that wanted to secede from soviet russia and make their own state and uh, not be part of a soviet union Right. Which is a fine idea, but, you know, when you look at the way, like, if you look at the way Moscow was treating other Soviet republics, you were like, yeah, you know what, <laughs> this whole thing about we will be puppets, in many ways, it's sort of correct. Because yeah. uh, after, like, it's sort of correct because they were emphasizing development of Russia. They weren't, like, really into having, like, equally developed and self-sustaining Soviet republics, you know? Because they were specializing, I understand that, but uh, this is part of the reason why most of the countries after the Soviet Union fell apart are in shit except Russia, economically. Russia is still <laughs> shit economically, let's be honest. Yeah, but they still had most stuff. It is that the Fucked it up the after the night. The economy 90s. is so fucking stupid. They literally, what they do is that they don't even refine their own fucking oil. They just sell it as, like, yeah, they just yeah. sell it as oil. And then countries literally refine it to gas and sell for like three times the fucking price. They're fucking stupid. It's really funny. Yeah. But yeah. Um, let's, have we talked about intervention yet? No, we didn't. Let's talk about, about intervention. Who? Intervention. Because. Uh. Oh. This oh, are you talking about the, the various forces that supported the uh, the factions? White Army, yeah, because basically, what be, when you tell people that, oh, you know what, that the southwest of Ukraine was basically occupied by French people, they were like, what? Like, and then, there are yeah. so many fucking countries that, the only country that helped out Russia, I mean, the Soviet Union, sorry about that, horrible mistake. Yes, yeah, Soviet Russia. So, very, very sorry, very sorry, I'm going to cut myself. It was Soviet but, Russia that's yeah. going, if you want to be correct. Uh, if we're gonna say, I, I I'd say that the only faction was Germany and maybe Austro-Hungary. I don't know if Austro-Hungary sent anything to the Soviet Russia, but the Ger the crowds definitely did help them. And uh, everyone else was basically against them. No, the they were. No, no, no. Czechoslovakia supported the like the the suppression of the Bolsheviks. That's what I'm saying. There were yeah, all their factions were against the Bolsheviks. That's what, except for Germany. Yeah. And the only reason Germany did support him was because to uh, basically fucking have him in the war. I mean, to knock him out of the war to help Austria-Hungary. Yeah, basically. And uh, 
there were a fuck ton of factions against the Bolsheviks or the fucking the Brits even helped Kolchak in fucking Vladivostok. So yeah, uh, they did. yeah. And they were doing a lot of trading, and they were doing a lot of like they were giving them weapons, giving them training. Yeah. They were doing all they could to help the whites. basically help them win. Yeah, yeah. It was really fucking insane, and I like to give like a very important like thing here, like the work workers' movement all around the world were doing their best to stop their respective countries from invading because everybody considered like if you look at the press everybody thought that like america would invade russia like that they would literally fucking take their armies and disembark and kill them all like they considered that and the the left wing in those countries were like you know what well, oh my god we need to do whatever we can to stop that this is why a lot of leftists at the time went to prison for um um for agitating against um the war efforts like being a pacifist at that time would mean you go to jail because right. it was literally illegal to stop like uh conscription and stop people from um like agitating for war and it shows that in such scenario when there is a civil war and the socialist revolution um is going on the um, it's really important that like the, the solidarity that we have been talking about all the time um it plays a huge part here because when there is a revolution somewhere it is literally it can only win only if all, all people all the workers uh would get together and uh try to um do whatever they can to support it like f because if it wasn't for those people if it wasn't for this um you know anti-war movement i'm pretty sure one of those countries could have literally started marching towards like petrograd yeah with, and they could have enough support to actually did it so it's just insane Oh, so Ooh. before, like, are there any other sides of the war that we failed to mention? Yeah, please explain. We we could talk about this all fucking day. This is my crack. Yeah, I understand. Oh, uh, anyone? How about how about we talk about uh, your motherland? Oh, half my motherland, you mean? Half motherland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, 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 one of the reasons why we wanted to have this talk is that a huge part of the revolution and the civil war was in the Caucasus region, and it, we it, it's the Caucasus you know, region in particular, Baku, like throughout. Yeah, not only World war, like everything up until the basically Saudi Arabia reaching oil, everything was centered on Azerbaijan. Yeah, because here's the thing: at around World War Two, and even at around the Russian Civil War. Baku had 50% of the world's known oil resources. Uh, that's, Insanity. It's fucking insane once you put that in motion. 50%. Mm -hmm. Saudi Arabia, I think, how much does Saudi Arabia have in terms of oil? A resources? lot. I yeah. don't know the numbers, but that's the Imagine most. Imagine that, but twice that in Azerbaijan during that time period in perspective. Yeah. It's fucking huge. Even I think there was like this propaganda video of Hitler like taking a piece of cake from like the Soviet Union, and a specific piece he took was like fucking Baku. That's how important yeah, it was. The whole reason, oil. the whole reason he went to Baku was just due to oil. He was like the Nazi Germany was like the U.S. of like World War II. <laughs> yeah. What are, what anyway. are you saying that America are the Nazis? Whoa. See, that's a, that's a woke take. See, That's basically a woke take. Yes. So please, well. please, I, I don't want to interrupt you. Please tell the story. So uh, basically, if we're talking about revolution in the fucking Caucasus, I'm, 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 there's like, it's a very complex situation what happened there. That involved the British, the fucking Armenians, the Turks these years. It was fucking huge. This mm -hmm. day was known as the Baku or the Baku crisis. You know what the fucking article is about it because I'm okay. trying to remember it. So basically, it was... Uh, 
um, it was basically uh, sun the central cast being dictatorship, which is very fucking interesting. The central cast being uh, dictatorship was centered around centered around Baku, and it was basically funded by the British. And this is fucking weird. This is extremely fucking interesting. It was funded by not only a puppet government that was funded by British. Yeah, not only that, it was funded by just not only Britain, but both the Bolsheviks and the fucking White Army. It's it's fucking bizarre. Why? Why? It was mainly due to the Ottomans. See, uh, oh fuck! I forgot. We forgot about the Ottomans. This is a phrase that no person should say, especially the Armenian. <laughs> especially the Armenian people. I'm gonna need it's to take. A, oh, I'm gonna we take. about the Turks. I'm gonna take a long walk after this fucking talk to comment about this. <laughs> Okay. Anyways, you have to walk it off, you know. Um, the trans transcaucasia is a little different. This is a trend. This is the trans. Uh, this is the central Caspian dictatorship. It's complete. There was like five fucking countries in the Caspian in like between 1918 and 1920. It was fucking big. Insanity. But, okay. So basically, the central. There was basically this whole internal conflict. Uh, this I may be fucking wrong, but. Tell the story uh, as you remember. Maybe the chat can correct us, or the comment section, the smart people in the comment section will correct you. Yeah, Tell the, the story as you remember it. So, basically, there was also the Baku Commune, Baku Soviet Commune. They're pro Bolshevik mm -hmm. types. And okay. who led this? Like, this whole situation really reminds me of that time when uh, Jason Unruh raped and killed his fucking girlfriend in the 90s. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, here's the thing. Um, what was I gonna fucking say? Oh, I broke a plate. I'm sorry, I'm in my kitchen. And Whoopsie. I'm gonna... Wait. <laughs> so yeah, this whole conflict was basically Jason under raping, killing his girlfriend in the 90s. So, let me explain sure. this. Um, the 26 Baku commissars were pro-Soviet people, and it was led by this big boy named uh, Stepan Shalman. Mm -hmm. He was a big boy. In, in the fucking Caucasus, he's known as the Caucasian London. There were statues all over him in the fuck in Armenia today. Uh, there's nice. a couple of them in Armenia. Uh, uh -huh. A lot of them, Baku. But after the Nagorno-Karabakh crisis, they basically took him down. F Can you please explain the Nagorno-Karabakh thing oh, for people who yes. may be not familiar? What's it all about? So uh, Nagorno-Karabakh is the uh, big boys. I mean, it's the big conflict. It's the big boy conflict going in the mm -hmm. Caucasus. If you ignore like South yeah. Ossetia and Abkhazia. Unfortunately, there's nothing known about it. Like, I mean, it's very underrated. So. In the night, this whole conflict was basically started by Stalin. And uh, what he did is that he wanted to, like, divide, like, cultural and ethnic groups and shit. So he gave the Gordo Karabakh to the Azeris, and it got absorbed into the AS ASSR, the Azerbaijani Socialist Soviet Republic. So mm -hmm. what happened was in the 90s, once all of these republics split, there was, like, this, there was the Baku pogrom where around 700 Armenians were executed in Baku. And that sparked this mm -hmm. huge fucking global thing where, I mean, not global, but this fucking Caucasian fucking thing. And yes, Jamie, God bless you. Mwah, beautiful sentence. And uh, what was it going to say? They basically went to war with uh, Azerbaijan, Armenia for like a year or two. And it's still going on today. There's, I think, like pot shots or something. But currently, in the Gorno Karabakh, it's an independent republic, but it's not internationally recognized. I think only maybe only Armenia recognizes it. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's going on to this day, and uh, there's been a lot of fun. Yeah. It's basically like the Balkans on a smaller scale, essentially. It's pretty bad, and mm -hmm. uh, this whole. Speaking of the twenty six Baku commissars, it was accelerated by like in two thousand nine. Uh, the Azeri government, basically, Azeri nationalists took over, I mean, destroyed the uh, the memorial to the 26 Baku commissars. And yeah, Barbie, that's correct. And uh, this caused this huge fucking outrage by the fucking Armenians. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so again, the now back to the conflict in the Caucasus during the Civil War. Now, okay. um... What the British are trying to do by supporting the uh, the trans central Caucasian uh, fucking forgotten it's fucking long uh, the central Caspian dictatorship they wanted to basically get oil it was it was basically just oil a lot of oil mm -hmm. a lot of oil and um, Soviets obviously took that but uh, what happened was that uh, the fuck are my shits so basically 
there was the Baku army and uh, the, the, the English, they supported the Armenians and the Armenian Revolutionary Federation, which was uh, this party in 1890 that was founded in uh, Ottoman Armenia. And it still exists today, surprisingly. It does. Um, oh. It's currently, actually, the Armenian, the party's called the Armenian Revolutionary Federation, and it still exists today, and it's currently the biggest political party in the Armenian diaspora. Over 20 countries have, like, um, bases in the Armenian Revolutionary Federation. They're very active in Nagorno-Karabakh. They're, like, ultra-nationalist socialists. Mm -hmm. So similar to the Ukrainian nationalists, but they're, like, it's quite fucking interesting. So, okay. uh, <laughs> so, uh, tell me was, about those, uh, commissars, the commissars, they were basically pro Bolsheviks who were from the Dashnaks and the Dashnaks are the Armenian Revolutionary Federation today. They're the only, okay. I think, like, I think they're one of the, only, if not the only party that exists today from the Russian civil war because the Bolsheviks are gone. They should, they're, they're the only one left. And they're quite active in Armenia. So this is very fascinating. It's and the main guy was Tipan Shalman. And uh, he basically founded the commune. He was an Armenian and he was, he lived in Azerbaijan. Now, mm -hmm. the Baku commune was made up by a lot of uh, ethnic groups. There's Russians, Georgians, Azeris, basically anyone who was a socialist and pro-Bolshevik in Baku. And... Uh, unfortunately, they were all executed by the transcentral, uh, the central Caucasian uh, dictatorship, where they basically rounded them up in, uh, I believe, it was Astrakhan, and uh -huh. uh, they're basically just shot. Only one of them survived, Mikoyan, and my father actually met the son of him, and Mikoyan actually was part of the uh, Supreme Soviet, like the presidential community. I remember Mikoyan. Yeah, Mikoyan. I know. I know this guy. I know him because there are a couple of uh, like sweet factories that, <laughs> that that are named after him, <laughs> and yeah. his name are mostly associated with sweets today. Yeah, unfortunately, sweet. How the fuck did that <laughs> yeah. happen? Yeah, because they just named factories under after revolutionaries, and this is why uh, this is why the communal factory in Minsk produces. Uh, is is the sweet factory just Ooh. a Spartacus factory? <laughs> oh, the question about Tatars. Tatars had like most a lot of them supported the whites, but uh, and they had like um, they were supported. They were supporting the whites, but they were suppressed, and uh, the Bolsheviks were the only ones who were promising them autonomy because uh, the Kolchak didn't want them to have autonomy at all. Yeah. Like, he was against that. It wasn't Kolchak, it was the Kolchak. Yeah, the Kolchak. And so, um, this is sort of a thing that happened. And then there was the whole famine in Tatarstan, and a bunch of people died. And, um, like, it's really fucking grim, all I can say. Uh, but for the most part, they were supporting the whites, and uh, then the Bolsheviks gave them autonomy. And uh, the B Ukrainian nationalists were suppressed by the Bolsheviks, and uh, the whole Nazbol thing started after that. And uh, very interesting thing about the Belarus, we had there was an attempt to create a bourgeois republic, uh, but most of the people who were establishing this bourgeois republic basically uh, were doing this, like <laughs> partly while being in Petrograd, not even in Belarus which is funny, and then they basically fleed the country once the Belarusian, all Belarusian Soviet proclaimed the Soviet Socialist Republic and joined the Union. Like, uh, for the most part, they were extremely irrelevant, but because of the fact that they still established this republic and they proclaimed to be the first independent, it was the first attempt to create an independent Belarusian country, uh, they still exist to this day. This is the oldest uh, government in exile that exists to this day. Because um, what they did is that they, like, when the Soviet Union fell apart and uh, all those governments in exile that proclaimed to, to themselves to be the inheritors of those bourgeois democracies before the revolution and during the revolution, um, basically returned back in the 90s and abandoned their 
whole, you know, they said, okay, this parliament is now the authority and uh, blah, blah, blah. We no longer need to be in exile, you know? In case of Belarus, because of the whole um, big boy president thing, um, they like they went back. They wanted to give back like the rights to the parliament to the current parliament, but then like a couple of dozens of people in black ran into the parliament and beat up a bunch of people while they were voting on the um, on whether Belarus would be a presidential republic or parliamentary. And then those people went in, beat them up, and then it became a presidential republic. <laughs> and because of that, they were like, you know what? Uh, we won't. This parliament is not legitimate. This parliament is not representing the people of Belarus. And so they went to Toronto, and they still reside in Toronto to this day. And this is the longest Damn. existing uh, government in exile. It's really interesting. But yeah, this is the sort of you know thing the Belarus did in the war. <laughs> is there anything else that we need to talk about, Vajnik? I don't know. Something else about know. the uh, about the Baku and the uh, Baku. Yeah. Are there any, any? Is there anything else that you want to say? There's a fuck ton of fucking shit that's like the whole conflict was extremely complex and it lasted for a very short time, so there's barely any fucking documentation about it. Mm -hmm. So. A lot of people don't know about it and about big boy shaman everyone needs to know about shaman he was a beautiful he was a beautiful beautiful man i'm gonna put his face in like uh in the, in the chat because everyone needs to know who this man is even if you're not <laughs> even if you're not like a leninist even if you're not like a fucking bullshit you need to know who this man is he's beautiful he's armenian jesus but no file exists it God. says oh no Stefan shaman let me quickly Google his name. Uh, you know how to spell it? Yeah, his face came up. Yeah, yeah. He, he looks like a, this beautiful Armenian man. He reminds me, he looks in some pictures a lot like Jan Stalin. A bit, <laughs> yes, he does like a lot. He looks like a burlier Jan Stalin. I posted it in chat if you want to check it out. Yes, and, he's a beautiful yeah. boy. Okay. Uh, I think we... Uh, I think we covered a lot of stuff. Is there anything else? Any of you chat, chat, what the fuck do you want us to talk about? I think I think we pretty much covered it all. Nah, there's too much. There's too much about it. There yeah. needs to be some people are gonna say. Yeah. Oh. Like we can really go deep into discussion of a particular like uh how it all went down. Uh I just know there was you know, and the complexity of the whole thing. Could be like it, it could be explained by this Fuck. quote from one movie about the Russian Civil War, or was yeah it was it was a Soviet movie, and uh, hang on the bar. All right, we have two yeah. comments before, already. Before, before we do that, uh, I'd like to quickly hang on tell the it's it's a tell all the right, joke. Let me right, finish right, the right, joke. Sorry, 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 sorry. Go eat my ass. Come on. No, you eat my ass. One second. I'm calling the cops. Uh, okay, feel free. Um. It was the joke that said basically, uh, revolution is a really uh, complex thing because when you go out in the morning, you go out of your room, uh, you go out of your uh, house, and you don't even know how to address people, comrade or sir. And if you make a mistake, you're gonna get shot because you have no idea who is in town today. They said you know there was a phrase that was quoted really often: "Who is in the city today?" Meaning, um, who who t is or who has control over the town today? The whites or the reds or the blacks? And you have no fucking idea. And the the land, like the whole thing, like the ownership over the cities were shifting so quickly that nobody fucking knew what the fuck is going on for the most part. You know? Hang on. And yeah. Uh, are you done with this or what? Because I want to yeah, go yeah. on. Yeah. All right, so we got a fuck ton of questions. What was the Baku Commune like? Um, it was basically just an organization of commissars who were and a couple of people who basically wanted to overthrow, I believe, the trans, the uh, central Caspian dictatorship, and they unfortunately did not. They got executed. They weren't their own. They're basically a political entity. I don't think they actually had any land, but they mm -hmm. were. 
but the USSR literally glorified them. Essentially, there was they built statues, they built uh, they had stamps, and uh, they're they're big boys. Yeah. Oh, in general, uh, I'm happy to know about uh, Caucus Lennon, the big boy. Uh, what else was I gonna no, he, fucking say? Caucus Lennon is this guy that we mentioned. Yeah. Uh, what's he? Yeah. Stepan Shalman. Yeah, Stepan Shalman. He's really interesting. So, is it anything else? Uh, what about only bro five 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 is asking? What about second Russian civil war? I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. Yeah, it's not going to happen anytime soon. I agree. But if if there was gonna be a Russian civil war, I would support the LDPR. Yeah, I support LDPR as well in their in their fucking um, in their it's well, it's not even you know struggle against uh, KPRF imperialism, but rather in their struggle to bury Lenin uh, and get him out of the mausoleum and bury him. Yes, Lenin so, is a stinky fucking communist rat. He needs to be. He needs to be buried. He no, he be, needs to be buried in the ground. He needs to be re-exterminated. <laughs> It's so funny that most of the politics is literally that, you know, we need to put Lenin in the ground. This is what they were uh, shouting about all this time. Uh, how is Japan so, involved in the Russian Civil War, he's asking. I think they supported the whites. Yeah, because they were close to... Uh, yeah, it was due to the alliance. It was due to the alliance yeah. with the Entente. Basically. Um... What do you think uh, about the famine in the Civil War? Who caused it? Um, for the most part, I'd like to mention that the if you go back, you see that the famine scare was... like the People were afraid of the famine even before the revolution. And uh, part of the reason why people supported the Reds was because of the famine. Because they were like, you know what? Well, famine is going to happen and we need to take power now because the... Um, the government is not dealing with it at all. And so um, they wanted to prevent it because there was a lack of food and people knew that it, there's going to be a famine. And uh, I believe that the war, as like, you know, the civil war happening, partly made it worse because you, you don't really think about like fucking grain transports and fucking train tra train that will be you know transporting grain around this giant fucking country when you have to fight a giant war and so in my opinion this is one of the reasons why the famine was that bad was because not because reds or whites but because civil war you know yeah this is sort of my take on it what about Finland's involvement? Ah, uh, fuck, I don't know much about that. Same. I don't really know much about their involvement uh, in the whole thing. Uh, I know that they they wanted to make, like, basically proclaim independence from Russia because they were occupied by Russia, and they started, they wanted to secede, and they sort of did. You know? This is w w one thing that... Um, they really wanted to do, and this is why they the whole they started a war to basically take it back. Uh, so Barbie's saying one thing that I've always been very critical of Lenin uh, was for basically selling out the Finnish Reds through Brasilovsk. They had a real chance of winning, especially with Russian support. I agree. I agree. I believe that fin Finland could won. Uh, in this case, and uh, like, but also if you look at Brest-Litovsk piece, people wanted it so bad, and Bolsheviks wanted it so bad, that they really had no time to sit there negotiating, and I can't just say, you know, eh, you know, Finland is just a fucking one of the things. I believe that everybody knew that Bolsheviks were not there to discuss the possibility of peace. And the Germans could have said whatever they fucking wanted, and Bolsheviks would have signed the papers. Um, you know? um, this is a very interesting question. 
Uh, why did Brusilov join the Bolsheviks while all the other uh, major Russian commanders, uh, Ivanov, Alexeyev, uh, Kornilov, uh, did not? I'm going to explain this. Mm -hmm. um, he basically said it, and I believe it was in, uh, the, mag in the newspaper Pravda. Uh, tall former officers joined the Red Army and shit like that. Uh, I think it was mainly because most of his soldier soldiers were serving in the Red Army. And uh, he basically decided that the whole path that uh, White Russia was taking was fucking gay. So he basically sided himself with the Reds. It, it, it's it's not it's not known by my by like uh, it's not really known why, but I think that was the main thing that I was finding out. He basically concluded that uh, uh, that's also yeah. case Pipweed. Um, he did hate the Russian establishment after what the shitty tactics, and he basically said that they're ruining uh, Russia, and that if he joined the Bolsheviks, it was more of a, a nationalistic uh, thing instead of joining the whites, because <coughs> yeah. he believed that yeah. they were going to make Russia great again. Yeah, because Lenin is like, do you remember those articles about Trump that said that he is using Bolshevik tactics? Whoa. Uh, they were comparing him to communists for for no reason. Like, <laughs> for some reason, they were like, you know what? Well, he's just like communism. Like, he's doing Maoist tactics. And they were trying to say that he was doing populism this way and trying to scare liberals, trying to, to scare people by saying, haha, communism. But they sort of stopped really quickly, thank God. <laughs> but for a short time, they were trying to say that he was a Maoist. Which is really funny. Yeah, but like, this is why Trump is literally Lenin. He's literally like Lenin. I'm not even joking. Exactly. Um, so I think I think we should finish it all off. And uh, I really enjoy talking to you about this topic. It's really it's such a fascinating topic. I know. I fucking. With like, historical facts it's filled with aesthetics it's filled with so much like right russian ultra nationalism yeah and stuff like this it's really good and i really enjoyed talking to the chat i tell i must say that people go back and check it out check out this conflict look into it because there is so much stuff that was going yeah, on check out the baku commune and the 26 baku commissars i fucking did any justice to what i was complete garbage in this just look for yourself it's fucking amazing yeah. what happened there very interesting so, yeah and i would love to hear some hot takes in the comment section down below about the right. civil war um we're and gonna yo eugene you're gonna play age of empires with me after this you're going to no, I'm, I'm going to fucking to beat you. I'm going to beat you. Now. I'm going to sleep now, dude. Stop playing as the go. Chinese. I'm playing, yeah, we're playing a bunch of video games right now together, and I'm basically annihilating Vojnik and Age of Empires These too. are fucking lies. Don't listen to the Tatar. 3-0, dude. 3-0. 2 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2-1-1-0. 2